Aris Marina, beauty with brains behind. In May 1968, Leyland Motor Corporation and British Motor Holdings merged to form British Leyland Motor Corporation. This merger was the final stage of an historical process which had been occurring within the British motor industry. The newly formed British Leyland Motor Corporation was a fusion of Britain's best engineering talents, with overall sales approaching £1,000 million a year. Lord Stokes became its chairman and managing director. Austin Morris Division was responsible for the 1100-1300 range, which was the best seller in the UK in 1969 and 1970. Nevertheless, it was clear that the market was changing and that the sea sector was becoming the largest and most rapidly growing. Only days after the merger was announced, Lord Stokes called the first meeting to consider a new car to compete directly with Ford's Cortina and Escort, Vauxhall's Viva and the proposed Avenger from Chrysler. Within that, we've seen that C-Class is liable to increase from 53% currently to 60% by then. Turning now to a price-volume relationship chart, we can see that the main volume is going to be in, within these price parameters. This is where the gap in our range is. This is where we're vulnerable to competition. Well, as far as we know, we'll be looking at the upper end of the new Viva range. Uh, there'll be the so-called Roots uh, B-Class car. And we understand that the 71 version of the Cortina is going up in size and price. The problem was not only one of competing in the toughest and most crowded sector of the market, but also one of time. The gap which had been defined in the market was considered significant enough to warrant an entirely new product. However, to develop and build a new car normally takes three and a half years. And I think we've got a time <coughs> scale problem. Uh, time isn't on our side. I don't think anybody could do anything better than produce this car in about three years. That gives us two and a half years as a target to work yeah. for. Is that right? Well, yes. <coughs> if uh, all these facts and figures are right, I'm sure they are. This really means we, we've got to move. George Turnbull was the man with overall responsibility for the new car as Deputy Managing Director of the Corporation and Managing Director of Austin Morris. Richard Perry, Managing Director of the Power and Transmissions Division of Austin Morris, responsible for all aspects of production, the utilization of existing plant and the construction of new facilities. Filma Paradise, Director of Sales for Austin Morris, responsible for all aspects of the marketing and selling operation, from initial concept to the end sale to the buyer. Harry Webster, whose responsibilities embrace the entire design and development of the new car, both body styling and mechanical parts. Director and Executive Chief Engineer of Austin Morris. Having defined the precise marketing opportunities, it was the responsibility of this team to produce and launch the new vehicle, codenamed ADO28. But, uh, you've got a pretty big job on your plate. We've got to come up with a style that's better than Capri. And then on the other hand, we've got to get better passenger accommodation and more luggage space than the 1971 Cortina that we've been hearing about. What you're really talking about is in two entirely different cars, and you're, you're really setting us a problem with this, you know. How can we do two in one? Let's try and keep an open mind up this, shall we? Harry Webster's team not only had to design a beautiful and competitive car, but they had the uh, same stringent the time limit. They decided to use engines which were already in production and which had proved reliable and efficient over millions of miles, and to design entirely original body styling. They tried endless variations until they finally arrived at styling they were all satisfied with. Underneath, more or less a basement, we've got a sloping ground at that end, which makes it difficult. But Richard Perry initiated an immediate review of production facilities. Harry Webster's team had already decided to make use of existing components where practicable it was decided to make the gearbox in the building known as the flight shed. This was greatly adapted and extended from 100,000 to nearly 180,000 square feet in order to deal with the high volume, 6,600 units per week.
Mechanical handling was carefully studied to keep costs down. The assembly area consisted of three main assembly tracks. The integration of the two previously separate factories, Press Steel Fisher and Morris Motors, was achieved by means of a 2,350 foot long overhead conveyor, which is totally enclosed. From the time the body shell is constructed at Press Steel Fisher until the finished car leaves the factory, all movements take place under cover. When the car bodies have been completed at Press Steel Fisher, they are transported via this new conveyor bridge into the assembly plant and given an electrocoat painting. Underseaming is carried out automatically. A high level section of track allows operators to work at two levels. The final assembly track slopes to floor level and the completed cars are driven off to the tuning track. This is fitted with electronic engine tuning apparatus for correct setting of the ignition and for tuning the carburetor. Now that the design and production problems had been carefully considered, the team met for a final appraisal. Well, Harry, it's well up to expectations. Looks very nice indeed. Now all we've got to do is to get it absolutely reliable and really good performance. With the body styling and mechanical features finalized, an exhaustive testing program was carried out. cars proved to be even more reliable than had been anticipated. Performance was equally good. Once this development had been completed, the problem was to launch into the marketplace, the Morris Marina. This then was the new product, not one, but ten new cars in two totally different body shapes, a two-door coupe and a four-door saloon, with nine colour options, three engines and three levels of trim. The engines were to be derivatives of the A and B series, 1300 and 1800cc, the latter in two stages of tuning. 